introduction to hybrid powertrain controls. Hybrid powertrain control is generally a torque based control. The control objective is to meet a driver's demand as efficiently as possible by coordinating the three torque actuators and clutch controls subjected to all system constraints and component constraint considering safety, drivability, emission, and component protection. The main functions of hybrid electric vehicle control architecture are the drive demand generator. It generates the desired powertrain propulsion torque and response type based on driver's pedal input. Mode selection and the needs from the driver. Needs from other vehicle systems such as cruise system and vehicle stability control system. Second function strategic reference generator. It generates strategic control reference such as engine on off command, desired engine speed and operating mode desired battery power and propulsion torque target based on efficiency and other consideration. Third function control reference generator. It generates control reference such as motor torque command, engine torque command and clutch control command that satisfy the strategic control targets and fulfill tactical control needs like engine start stop controls. The control reference are the control targets to be achieved by subsystem controls such as motor torque control by motor controller. The next function is regenerative braking system control. It generates the total brake torque based on the brake pedal input and vehicle conditions and determines the regenerative brake torque command to be executed by the powertrain controls and the friction brake torque control. Figure shows a generic hybrid electric vehicle control. Here we can see the main blocks discussed. This is the driver's input. Then another is the strategic reference generator. Next one is the controls reference generator. The fourth one is regenerative brake system. Also, the driver command generator gets input from the driver input, vehicle safety systems input, vehicle external conditions, and it gives the input to the strategy reference generator. The strategy reference generator has the propulsive torque reference, battery power reference, transmission state desired, IC engine operating point reference. Afterwards, it gives input to the control reference generator. It is the IC engine torque command, machine torque command, clutch control reference, which are given to the IC torque control, machine one torque control, machine two torque control, and clutch control, which is given to the propulsion torque system and then it goes to the vehicle. Also input comes from the friction brake torque to the vehicle and vehicle states are also given to this control reference generator and the strategic reference generator through system operating conditions. Also inputs are given to the regenerative braking system from the propulsive torque reference from the driver input and from the vehicle safety system. 
So this complete block shows the generic hybrid electric vehicle controls, which are discussed in the earlier slide, with having the functions of driver demand generator, strategy reference generator, control reference generator, and regenerative braking system control. The hybrid control functions. First is the engine on off decisions. The equivalent wheel torque. Wheel speed envelope for an electric vehicle mode may be useful for control purposes. Wheel torque demand is within the envelope. The engine off mode is. Taken or desired here we can see the envelope. Here it is the maximum wheel torque in EV mode. This is the minimum wheel torque in EV mode. So within this, it is used as a EV mode envelope and engine is turn off. This envelope may contract or expand depending on various conditions. That is deviation from the nominal level as shown from the graph. The envelope may be modified when uh, first envelope may contract or expand depending on the battery discharge power capability. If SOC is approaching the lower SOC limit, it may be desired to reduce the AV power threshold above which engine mode is prepared. So if the battery SOC is approaching at lower level, engine on mode will be prepared above the envelope or envelope will be shifted. Second, certain hysteresis must be introduced to the envelope to prevent excessive engine off and engine on mode changes. In that case also the envelope or the characteristics will get modified and the engine will be turned on by shifting the envelope. Third, certain considerations can override the mode selection that might be efficiency centric. If the for example, if the engine heat is needed for cabin heating, the engine on mode should be turned on, though the envelope is not expecting the engine mode, but engine is turned on to achieve this heat consideration. Fourth, drivability consideration may also push for selecting engine on solution at the power level that is lower than the nominal one. Algorithm based on quantitative evaluation and logics can be devised to achieve consistent and near optimal results after significant amount of simulations, calibrations and tests as evidenced by many efficient and fun to drive hybrid models in the markets. Second, engine operating point optimization. It is challenging enough to just find the optimal solutions for fuel minimization alone. In real applications, there are other factors to be considered and more trade-offs to be made. Some engine operations specified specific must be taken into consideration in determining the desired engine operating points and possible engine operating modes. These specifics may include emission control needs, torque control needs, engine fast and slow torque response types. Some examples are given below. So the trade-off for engine optimization will check when to use EV mode or engine mode. Engine operating mode and operating points in engine on mode. Trade off regenerative to braking efficiency and safety and braking quality. Performance mode. Trade off between efficiency and responsiveness. Next sir, is the strategy for emission controls and onboard diagnostics operations. Seventh, trade off between efficiency and NVH, that is noise, vibration and harshness. Component protection strategies. Ninth, 
system degraded performance and shutdown strategies. Tenth, interaction with vehicle systems such as electronic stability program (ESP). Eleventh, operating strategy for extreme conditions such as ambient temperature and grade. Twelfth, interaction with drivers such as human machine interface (HMI) and feedback system. So these are some trade-offs and plans to achieve the engine optimizations and there may be certain decisions or compromise between these factors. The objective of the tactical controller is to generate the motor torque commands and the engine torque command that together will achieve the desired strategic solutions. The system control targets to some specific control functions. The functions may include engine start stop control, engine speed control, clutch control and shift execution, battery power control, regenerative braking control, drive line damping control, battery associate control, thermal system control, transmission pump control, and accessory power control. The third point is engine start control. The objective of engine start control is to complete the transition as quickly as possible without creating noticeable disturbances to the driver and to the drive line. This transition generally includes four phases. That is engine breakaway, engine spinning up, engine firing, and engine stabilization in speed and torque. The transition controls are accomplished by coordinated actions of motor A and motor B and the engine. So the motor and engine takes place into this transition. The transition from engine off to engine on is likely triggered by driver's rising command. The slow transition just could not provide the responses expected by the driver. There are six dynamic events occurring rapidly during the transition and must be controlled. First, high engine breakaway torque and it changes fast. Second, engine compression pulse is significant and must be compensated. Third, spinning the engine fast to reduce the torsional damper responses resonance. Fourth, engine first firing pulse may be high even with spark retardation. Fifth, engine torque varies fast as spark is advancing and the manifold is pumping down. Sixth, battery voltage and power vary fast. So these are the six dynamic events occurring rapidly during the transition and they must be controlled properly. The first five dynamics must be modeled and calibrated precisely and included in the feed forward term. Tires and Ford Fusion, hybrid electric vehicle and other similar models have demonstrated seamless engine start. The next point is the regenerative braking control. Regenerative braking is a major efficiency enable enabler in electric vehicle. It should be used as much as possible. Within powertrain controls, the regenerative braking functions as three tasks. Estimate regenerative braking capacity for all modes of that is EV mode, engine on mode, and the transitions. Dynamically shaping the capacity to remove the oscillatory component. Executing the regenerative braking torque as commanded by regenerative braking system. The power trade controls must be robust and effective under all external conditions and system conditions as typified by the following list. Battery temperature and cell temperatures battery SOC, battery voltage and cell voltages, cabin air temperature, engine coolant temperature. So these are the 
power train controls and conditions also engine oil temperature exhaust temperature motor temperature inverter temperature converter temperature and transmission fluid temperature the power train controls design development calibration and test must cover all conditions to ensure safe reliable efficient and fun to drive hybrid electric vehicles hybrid electric power train includes hybrid power train architectural design control engineering embedded system engineering and embedded software engineering it also involves modeling and simulation hardware development controls development software development vehicle integration calibration and verification and validation test fuel economy improvements in hybrid electric vehicles there are four different ways the electric propulsion system efficiently acts to improve the energy efficiency of the vehicle first higher operating efficiency of electric machines higher operating efficiency of electric machines over their entire speed torque envelope provides a remarkable advantage on fuel efficiency improvement efficiency of ic engine is less than half of the electric machines ic engines are designed to operate under certain speed torque operating conditions to achieve optimum efficiency and its efficiency varies considerably throughout the entire speed torque envelope of the engine the real world driving demands fluctuating power and torque and they have to be somehow supplied in an efficient manner to drive the wheels hybrid electric vehicles effectively explore the advantages of electric motors with the involvement of a less complicated transmission system to maximize the full potential of the electromechanical system of hybrid electric vehicles the involvement of advanced control system is very important or it is mandatory second is the second factor in the fuel economy improvement in hybrid electric vehicle is the kinetic energy recovery the kinetic energy recovery is another key attribute which is not available in conventional ic engine vehicles the kinetic energy of the vehicle is generally dissipated as heat in the brake disc during the braking phase of the conventional vehicles but in case of hybrid electric vehicles the dual mode operating capability of electric machine motor and generator provides a great opportunity to recover this waste energy and store it into the battery that is nothing but the regeneration or regenerative braking this free energy can be effectively used to fuel the consequent acceleration demand of the vehicle it could be significant during stop and go city driving conditions of the vehicle compared to steady and smooth highway driving conditions the third factor in the fuel economy improvement is the idling mode operation a remarkable amount of energy is wasted during the idling mode operation of the vehicle which happens a lot during peak driving hours in both city and highway driving environments conventional vehicles are not designed to stop the engine during idling and it simply lets the engine to idle hybrid vehicles effectively use this opportunity by simply shutting off the engine during the idling mode of the vehicle and use this pure electric mode to drive the vehicle in a slow moving traffic this particular feature significantly increases fuel economy or fuel efficiency while reducing greenhouse gas emissions in the environment fourth factor is the large onboard electric battery hybrid electric vehicle designs can incorporate bigger rechargeable onboard electric batteries to fuel the electric motors 
this type of hybrid electric vehicles can achieve considerable electric only mode without the involvement of IC engine. This concept is generally used in plug-in hybrid electric vehicles and the onboard battery of the vehicle is recharged by the grid during night and it is used during the daytime driving cycles. Therefore, this kind of vehicle does not consume any gasoline or petrol or diesel to achieve significant driving range, which results in zero emissions and it is an environment friendly solution.